In episode 30, we're going to talk about how to convert an object to a string and how to convert a string representation of an object into an object that we can actually use using stringify and parse. These are built-in functions that you can use on your JavaScript objects and JavaScript strings to convert them back and forth. Why is that handy? Because you may have a complex object, you may have a simple object, and you just want to see, does it contain the values that I want in a very easy readable format, in a text format? Or you may be integrating, you may be working with another system, sending information or receiving information to from another system where you need to convert that textual representation to an object called JSON, as I mentioned before, JavaScript object notation. The stuff that flies across the internet is text. It's just a text representation of data, whether it's database information or JavaScript objects or CSS or HTML or XML, you get text. That's all your browser understands. That's all the other systems understand. So that's what we're transmitting most of the time. And we're going to use json.stringify to convert that back and forth. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Here again is my book list from the last example. I've got titles and authors in an array. Very easy to do. And if I just print out like I did with a simple array and I say GS info book list, boom, throw it out. It kind of does it. It says you have an array of three elements and they're comma separated like we saw in the array video, but it's not very descriptive. It just says you have three objects. Well, at least I know they're not simple data types. So what I can do instead is add on to that, start at the top and go down to here and use json.stringify. Stringify turns that complex array or object or array of objects or array of objects with arrays in them into a string denoted format. And we'll copy that up here. And when I have that string, then I can put that out with GS info and read it. And I get array with an object. The object ends here. And I continue on going through this thing. And you can see, even though it's an array of three elements with two properties each, it gets a little hard to read. That's, that's useful and may be fine if you're sending it off to another system as part of your payload of integration stuff, but it's not the easiest to read from a debugging standpoint. So what I did is went out to mdn.whateveritis.com and said, tell me more about JSON stringify. And it said, oh, there's two more arguments. The second one is some sort of formatter or processor. I generally don't deal with it if you think you have a useful purpose for it or curious, go look. Uh, the four says I want to use four space indentation. So let's go back here, paste the last couple of lines in. And from a debug standpoint, I can do this. So either one of these is acceptable to most integrations that I've dealt with. I haven't had a problem with the indentation. Note that stringify also puts in the double quotes. Internally, I don't even think they exist. It's just a dotted notation. I'm not sure what, what's going on internally, but when it comes back out to be strings and I built this object with dot notation, it will put the quotes in where they need to be, double quotes and everything. This is a little easier when I need to later go back and say, now, how do I access the author? Oh, it's in an array, in an object. So it's going to be object name, subscript, dot, whatever it is, like you saw in the previous video. So that's an easy way to do stringify. What if I get a string, say I get this back, this payload back from finance.yahoo.com and I say, what's the service now stock price? And it gives me back a string of information. I need to turn that into an object that I can then say, well, how does the price today compare with the price yesterday? Am I up money or down money? That would be done with json.parse. Now, here is an example where I've got Let's pull that out in here. I've got a string. It starts with a single quote, so I don't mix up my single quotes and double quotes. If you if you did, and you went like this, it would say, uh, wait a minute, where does your string end? Remember with string variables? It goes, here's a string, and what is title? I have no idea what that is. If we try to run that, it's going to go, you, you messed something up with your quotes somewhere. So to avoid that, I am going to put it back to single quotes and display the length of the string first. 
Note, what is the length? Oh, it's about 180 some characters, just eyeballing that up. But if I run that string as a parameter to json.parse, I will get back an object. So I get back this library object of which I can access the array, access the elements, do a stringify if I want, whatever you like. Note the length of the object is going to be, what was it? An array of three elements, run that. And of course it comes out with, the length of the string is 186. The length of your object, which is an array, is three. So very easy to figure that out. And the last line of that code was to just verify that we had everything done. It stringifies the library object again with the indentation. So I can take an, a rough formatted compact model of this object, turn it into a JSON object, manipulate it in my application, and then stringify it for either debug or output again. So there it is. Very easy to convert object to string using json.stringify or string to object using json.parse. Very, very useful methods that you can use and should use on a regular basis when you're dealing with objects. So I have a lab for you. Stick around. It's time to apply what you've learned. See you in a bit.